Hello my dear students. Welcome to Fluid Mechanics Lecture Series. I am your Suma Miss. My channel name is also Suma Miss. You can watch my videos on my channel. If you found useful, please don't forget to like, share, comment. Your comments are highly valuable to me. The topic for today's discussion is action of fluid pressure on submerged curved surface. In many engineering applications, it is necessary to know the magnitude, direction and location of resultant hydrostatic force exerted by liquid in static condition on submerged curved surface. For example, the pressure force acting on curved surface of ship or submarine which are under rest in water or curved gate for us Louis. In rainy season, you might have heard about lifting of gate for the removal of excess water that is collected in a dam. So spillway gates are used for this removal of this water. It is cylindrical shape. Similarly, the sector gate is used for the flow control in locks and dams. Hence, today's discussion focused on the action of fluid pressure on curved surfaces. In a body of liquid, pressure varies from point to point and pressure increases when we move down. When fluid pressure acts on a surface, the pressure forces acting on small elements can be represented by a single resultant force. So if the surface is plane, the pressure forces acting on the small elements will be parallel and normal to the surface. So the resultant hydrostatic force can be represented by P equal to sigma P into delta A where P is the intensity of the pressure and delta A that is the area of the small element. However, in the case of curved containers, pressure force that act normal to the surface and will therefore not be parallel. So resultant hydrostatic force may be obtained by combining vectorially its mutually perpendicular force component. So these mutually perpendicular force components are horizontal components and vertical components. So resultant hydrostatic force can be obtained by the resolution of these pressure forces and it is less than sigma p into delta a. So this can be elaborated in more detail by considering a curved surface AB subjected to water pressure in one side. So consider an element here. So pressure forces that is acting on this element which makes an angle theta with respect to horizontal. So this pressure force that is acting normal to the surface. So dp that is the pressure force. So which can be resolved into mutually perpendicular force component. So horizontal component is dph and vertical component is dpv. So how will you find out dph and dpy? In order to calculate dph, we have to consider the element here. So this element is having area dA, which is at a distance of h from the free surface. So dp that can be resolved into dph and dpv. So dph is the horizontal component and dpv that is the vertical component. So intensity of the pressure here that is small p or lowercase p that is equal to because this element is at a distance of h from the free surface this p equal to rho gh. So rho gh into dA will give you the pressure force. Now how will you get dph? dp that is acting normal to the surface which makes an angle theta with respect to horizontal or dph equal to dp cos theta. What is dp? dp is p into dA. So if you are substituting here we can write dph equal to p into dA cos theta. Now what is this dA cos theta? dA cos theta is vertical projection of this element dA. Or dPH means the pressure force which is acting on the vertical projection of the area dA. In other words, Horizontal component of resultant hydrostatic force may be obtained by projecting the curved surface upon a vertical plane. And the magnitude of this horizontal component of resultant hydrostatic force that is equal to area of this vertical plane multiplied with the intensity of the pressure that is acting through the centroid of this area. So the centroid of the area is at a distance of h bar from the free surface. So pH equal to area of this vertical plane multiplied with rho g 
h bar. So this is the vertical plane. So this vertical plane is the projection of the curved surface AB upon a vertical plane. So with respect to this water surface, this is a vertical plane. So intensity of the pressure is varying from point to point. So when we move down, pressure increases. So we can mark the pressure as, as a pressure diagram where pressure is increases from this point to this point. Or in other words, horizontal component of this resultant hydrostatic force that is equal to area of this pressure diagram. Now, how will you calculate the vertical component of the resultant hydrostatic force? That is equal to the weight of this liquid column that is coming over this curved surface AB. That means the weight of the liquid prism ABETCA that is coming vertically over this face AB. The determination of the weight of the prism and its center of gravity is simplified by dividing this into convenient parts. Now let us discuss the calculation of resultant hydrostatic force. So for which we can consider a curved container filled with the liquid. AB is the marked portion of this container. Pressure force that is acting normal to the surface which makes an angle theta with respect to horizontal. The magnitude and direction of this pressure force is varying from point to point when we move from A to B. The pressure force delta P that is acting on this element having area dA which is at a distance of h from the free surface. So pressure force that is equal to rho g h into dA. This delta P is making an angle theta with respect to horizontal. So this can be resolved into vertical and horizontal components. So dPH is the horizontal component and dPV that is the vertical component. Intensity of the pressure at this point equal to rho g h or delta P can be written as delta P equal to P into delta A or rho g h into delta A. So in the case of curved surface, the magnitude and direction of this pressure force that is varying from point to point, the resultant hydrostatic force may be obtained by combining vectorially is mutually perpendicular force component. So these mutually perpendicular force components are designated by horizontal and vertical component. So since it is a curved surface, resultant hydrostatic force may be obtained by the resolution of these forces. It is less than integral of P delta A. Delta pH can be written as delta P sin theta. So delta P equal to rho g h into delta A or it is equal to rho g h into delta A sin theta. So this portion indicates the vertical projection of this area dA that is the horizontal component of resultant hydrostatic force may be obtained by projecting this curved surface upon a vertical plane. So this is a vertical plane or pH equal to sigma delta pH which is equal to the area of this vertical plane multiplied with the pressure that is acting through the centroid of this vertical plane. Similarly, delta PV that is equal to delta P cos theta or rho g h into delta A cos theta or PV equal to sigma delta PV which is equal to weight of this liquid column that is acting over this curved surface AB. So resultant hydrostatic force equal to root of pH square plus PV square and line of action of this resultant hydrostatic force equal to tan inverse of PV by pH. So this calculation is very much useful in the design of gates which is used in spillways, dams, locks, etc. Consider two identical curved surfaces with respect to the water pressure. In the figure 1, pressure force is acting on the concave side whereas in the figure 2, pressure force is acting on the convex side. In these two cases, the position of AB is same with respect to the water surface. Obviously, the pressure force that is acting on the curved surface AB will be same. However, when we are resolving these forces into horizontal and vertical components, we can see that in the figure 1, the horizontal force in the horizontal direction whereas vertical force that is acting downward. So coming to the figure 2, if you are resolving this, we can see that vertical force that is acting upward. So how will you calculate vertical force? So in this figure 1, vertical force that is equal to weight of the water column 
that is acting on this curved portion AB. But it is acting in the downward direction. Here also PV that is equal to weight of this imaginary volume of water that is acting in the upward direction. So in the horizontal component that is here that is same in both cases that is equal to rho g into a into h bar where a means that is the vertical projection of this curved surface upon a vertical plane and h bar is the distance of the center of gravity of this vertical plane with respect to the free surface. The calculation of resultant hydrostatic force and the point of application of resultant hydrostatic force is very much useful in many engineering applications. For the time being, it is enough. Thank you. Please don't forget to drop the comments.